I'm doing a dedicated video on the p-value because this p-value is something in hypothesis tests that confuses lots and lots of students. So if you're watching my video and you're at first you're puzzled about this p-value, don't worry because you're joining a big band of students. I think that's something that why students confuse is because it's the way that they are taught in university or colleges. Um, they're given the definition of a p-value. Uh, with that definition, they're not able to use it. Well, as an applied statistician, if you're just doing a project, you don't need to know the definition. You just need to know how to use it. Okay, so the definition usually goes along the lines of something like, oh, the p-value is the smallest significance level at which you can reject the null, or it's the probability at which you can see something as extreme or more extreme than your data, given that the null is true. That second definition is one that many psychologists usually regurgitate back to me and then don't know what they've just said. Um, so if that's you, don't worry. This p-value, let's just lay down the rules. The p-value is there for each test. SPSS gives you um, this p-value and the p-value is there so that you can determine whether or not to go with H0 or H1. Okay. Now the rule is this. If the p-value is low, will you reject the null? What do I mean by low? Well, the p in p-value stands for probability, and probability takes the value between 0 and 1. Okay, so p-value may take value between 0 and 1. We reject the null when the p-value is low. We need some kind of threshold at which we say what low means. So a standard one is to say 0 0.05. So a p-value of less than 0 0.05 would reject the null. Or we can use 0 0.01. Okay. These figures correspond to levels of significance. So 0 0.05 stands for 5% significance level. Don't worry too much if you don't know what I'm saying here, but this is just jargon. 0.01 stands for doing a test at the 1% significance level. If you are able to reject the null at the 1% level, you may conclude there is very strong evidence against the null. Okay, in other words, the very strong evidence that the null is not true. Whereas if you're able to reject the test only at the 5% level, it means there is strong evidence against the null. So you can see what's happening is here is that it's level of conviction against whether the null is true yes or no. And finally there is, let's just complete this table, there is a 0 0.1 so that corresponds to a 10% significance level. And that it, here if we can only reject at the 10% we can say there is weak evidence against the null. Okay. So, let's give you an example. Say my p-value for SPSS, it gives me a p-value of 0 0.02. Then what would you conclude? Well, this p-value is less than 0 0.05, so we less than 0 0.05, so we can definitely conclude there is strong evidence against the null. But is 0 0.02 less than 0 0.01? No, it's bigger than 0 0.01, so we would not reject at the 1%. In other words, in this case, we reject at the 5%, but not the 1% significance level. So conclude there is strong evidence against the null. H0. Okay. How about if I have a p-value of um, 0 0.12? Well, 0 0.02 is bigger than 0 0.01, so it's bigger than 0 0.05, it's bigger than 0 0.1. So here we cannot even conclude there is weak evidence. So in this case, there is no evidence. That implies there is no evidence against H0. In other words, your data does not support um, the alternative hypothesis. See, if you are doing, 
if you're doing this regularly with tests, you, you'll remember these uh, levels of sequence 10, 5, and 1%, and how to use the p value. Uh, still, students walk into an exam and they forget uh, how to use the p value. Well, if you like ditties, remember this p is low, means that the null hypothesis must go. In other words, if p is low, the null hypothesis must be rejected in favor of h1. So remember, p is low, null must go, and now it's time for me to go as well.